I was an undergraduate at MIT and I was interested in physics and astronomy and then I got there and all kind of all the romance and you know intrigue of astronomy and cosmology was kind of missing so I kind of flailed around and I had never liked biology but then took a course by a guy Jerry Letvin who's a really um, famous neuroscientist at MIT who was just the most off-the-wall professor I've ever had who um, yeah it, it just threw the switch and he assigned us to read you know our textbook was this book of classic you know some of them were uh, Nobel Prize papers you know from Woods Hole on squid and things really you know like top-level papers that I still don't understand some of them but it just you know I liked it because it was kind of technological and more kind of engineering, mathy, and a biology, so it wasn't like the kind of biology I'd had in high school. So I did neuroscience and then went to grad school at UC San Diego, which has a strong neuroscience program, That's and great. been in neuroscience ever since. Yes, so I started grad school at UC San Diego in 19, fall of 1970. Five, and I um, rotated in labs and then ended up doing my PhD in the lab of Bill Christian, um, who's a neurophysiologist. And um, I first, so I first came to MBL in the, sun well, okay, I had been here as an uh, undergraduate at MIT. I'd been down on the Cape and been through here, but it didn't register at all. But then um, in 1978, that, that summer was the first offering of Neural Systems and Behavior which remains one of the really top courses. And before that, it had been a course called Invertebrate Zoology. So, um, you know, I had no idea any of this was going on, but Ron Hoy and Alan Gilperin had somehow raised the suggestion or whatever made it happen that invertebrate zoology got turned into neural systems and behavior, which right now, I mean, that title is brilliant because it's still you know, a top area, even bigger now, neural, the whole, you know, concept of neural systems is huge in neuroscience. But 1978 was the first year that that course was offered. So Bill Christian, my advisor, came to teach in NSNB, and I came as a TA. And I was going to be a TA, just teaching assistant, just for his part of the course, which I think was two weeks. But it being a new course and everything being just thrown together, I you know did that all summer basically. So I got to be involved in the whole course. And then because it was kind of a hybrid, there were still some people from the invertebrate zoo class that didn't want to let go. So we had to go to Sipawisset and dig worms out of the sand and still try to you know do some invertebrate zoology stuff. So I TA'd that, so that was the first year. And then I've been back every summer, this is 2013, except I think two summers um, early in my career, and then I've been here every summer since. It probably started right off the bat, but I mean, and it's so cliche, you know, it's like just like Disneyland for scientists and neuroscientists. and. I always said later on, I know I used to say that my whole intellectual year started here in the summer. So like I'd come here, you know, I'd spend my academic year, you know, I was at Berkeley and then I'm at University of Oregon and then I'd show up in Woods Hole and then like the, the summer was like this refueling of all the intellectual stuff and the teaching and then teaching and having all these great students question you know I talk about my own work and they'd ask the obvious really great questions and have ideas and I would just get so supercharged and then hearing all the talks and all the other people that that came in the place here and then I'd get back home you know all fired up and then by the next May I'd kind of you know worn myself out you know lost momentum again and then come here and get you know just jazzed up again Right, when I was an undergraduate, I worked on phage, bacteriophage, which are viruses of bacteria. And then um, as a grad student, I worked on leech nervous system, so in Bill Christian's lab. And this is still a prep that's, that kind of anchors the first two weeks of NS and B. So I was working on the neural circuits for swimming. So leeches swim with this really beautiful sinusoidal rhythm. And so I was working on individual neurons that were involved in the circuitry that made that behavior work. 
And then for a postdoc, I switched to insects, and I went. I was a postdoc at University of Washington with someone who had n nothing to do with Woods Hole, strangely enough. But um, and there started working on how neural circuits in insects change during metamorphosis, working on the big moth, Manduca sexta. But importantly there, I was a, a postdoc at the same time as a guy, Rick Levine, who's at University of Arizona, who subsequently taught with me when we taught Manduca, which is the caterpillar that turns into the moth. We taught that in, in NSNB for, I don't know, almost 20 years maybe. Anyway, that's where I first got to know Rick, and he was my teaching partner here at NSNB for years and years and years. So that was a really fortuitous thing. So I was working on insect metamorphosis, and then that continued um, for a long, long time. And then we got, we sort of got to the point where some of the questions about how the nervous system changes, we were kind of dead-ended dead ended in Manduka because we didn't have the molecular tools or genetic tools. So we switched to Drosophila. So I was looking at uh, metamorphic changes in the nervous system in Drosophila. And then in parallel, and this ties back to MBL, I got asked um, in 96 to teach in a Ebro uh, neuroscience school in South Africa. So in Ebro, International Brain Research Organization, runs um, neuroscience courses around the world, developing world. And because of my MBL connection, I got asked to teach in that course, and that just changed everything. So I've been teaching um, in short, you know, like week or shorter long neuroscience courses in Africa since 96. And through that, I got really interested in global health issues and most recently, and then I shut down all my insect research and I wanted to go in a new direction. And this is a really risky thing to do because I just finished my students, finished my postdocs, figured out what to do next. And to make a long story short, ended up collaborating with um, somebody else with an MBL connection. So Sean Lockery, who was a grad student in the same lab I was at UCSD and had been an NSNB student and has taught in NSNB, but he's my colleague down the hall in Oregon. So we started collaborating on basically a microfluidic, it's a technology that combines microfluidics with electrophysiology. So he's an electrophysiologist too. And we've developed a system to, um, it's an assay system to speed up the um, discovery of new drugs for nematode, intestinal nematode infections, which are a huge human health problem. So hookworm, whipworm are terrible, um, you know, background burden of disease in developing parts of the world. And so, um, right, so we were working on C. elegans, which is not a parasitic nematode, but then I just got funding from the Gates Foundation to modify the technology to use on parasitic nematodes. But part of the, you know, this about switching fields, you know, we always, one thing we tried to teach in NSNB was fearlessness. You know, like if you just want to do an experiment or you want to try a new method, or we'd come in at night and unplug all the cables from the students' rigs, you know, like in the first week, and they'd come in and go, no, I don't know, and everything's connected. And then they would have to put it back together. Then they realized they could do it, and we just kept upping the ante. And I realized that kind of philosophy, you know, I ultimately used that in my own career choices to just go for it, you know, to just make a big leap and it could have been a disaster, but it worked. The standard worm load in an African child steals 25% of their nutrition every day. So, and, and they're malnourished to begin with. And there's so much attention, you know, the big three in global health are HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. And now there's this big movement led largely by Peter Hotez, who's like the Paul Farmer of neglected diseases, about the huge toll that these, you know, diseases that are neglected in some ways, but that have a huge effect, like all the, the worm infections, that actually can often be treated just incredibly cheaply. So I just, that just um, had a big impact. 
And then the question was, is, as a, you know, as an invertebrate electrophysiologist, you know, what do I bring to the table in this field? And, um, you know, I was not, not a whole lot. So I'm just really glad that I found a niche with this uh, using electrophysiology as an um, assay for new drugs. Because most of the good anti-worm drugs act on ion channels, which is, you know, like my life revolves around ion channels. So by being able to record electrically from the worms while um, testing, you know, applying test compounds, you can assess whether a drug candidate, um, you know, might act on neurons or muscles. So it somehow the neuroscience work managed, I found a good niche. I just can't imagine what my life or my scientific career or my circle of friends or the richness of my life would have been without being here in the summers. Um, and I'm sure everybody you interview says this, so again, it sounds kind of cliche, but I mean, just being here and I would be teaching, and my husband would usually come and write, although, so Bill Roberts, he would also teach in Innocent B. So he did sometimes, but being here with my kids, and, you know, and they loved it here, and just this kind of seamless work home thing, it was just the best family time and the best scientific time, and it was so much fun, you know, just the crazy things we do in the course and getting to know all these students so it's just been you know scientifically all the great ideas and I got some incredible postdocs who were NSNB students so and then just the ideas that would come and then having to come every year and talk about my own work to these incredibly brilliant students you know really kept me on my toes and then just getting to hear all these great scientific talks and has made me a better scientist and yeah <laughs>